Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of The Surge. This week we have a really interesting case for you. It's perplexing. It's the baffling case of Jonathan Luna. Jonathan Luna was a family man with a wife and two kids. He was 38 years old and worked as an assistant U.S. attorney in a federal building in Baltimore, Maryland. On December 3, 2003, Jonathan Luna was working on a case involving two drug dealers that were dealing drugs out of a supposed music studio. He spent the morning in court on that case and the evening with other defense attorneys trying to hammer out a plea deal. He called his partner on the case around 9 p.m. on December 3rd and let him know he was going home, he would work more on the plea deal at home, but he would be back the following morning, he would keep working. On December 4th, 2003, Jonathan Luna did not show up to work. At around 5 a.m. on December 4th, 2003, a worker at a well drilling company in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, showed up for work, made some coffee, punched in, normal routine, he went outside, started filling the company's six trucks with fuel for the day, and he saw a light blinking over next to the river. He thought it was a little strange, but he went over to look and found a silver Honda Accord with blood splatter on the fender. He actually saw a little blood inside the car. At that point, he called the Lancaster County Police, and some state troopers showed up and looked. There was blood splattered all over the inside of the car, around $200 scattered inside the car. The blood looked like it went so heavy and it actually poured through the driver's seat into the back floorboard behind the driver's seat. I looked around and the driver was actually outside of the opened driver's side door laying face down in the creek with a suit on and overcoat and it was Jonathan Luna. Luna was found with 36 stab wounds in all, more than half of those to his neck area. One of those stab wounds hit his carotid artery and let his blood flow freely which may have resulted in his death. The coroner actually ruled it as bleeding out and drowning as he had fallen face first in the river. He did have a wound on his head as well, but that wound could have been a result of falling into the river itself. Luna's incredibly strange drive after he left the Baltimore Federal Building took him to Delaware, where he withdrew $200 from an ATM, and then he drove on into New Jersey, exited New Jersey, and went into Pennsylvania. Luna's boss at the Federal Building, who reportedly had a dislike for Luna, put out a monetary reward to find the murderer. The murder weapon found at the scene was actually a small little penknife, a personal penknife of Luna's. A murderer was never found in the case of Jonathan Luna, but there was a private investigator who started working the case and investigating, and he did write a book called The Midnight Ride of Jonathan Luna. In his book, he investigates with the undertaker who prepped Jonathan Luna's body for his funeral. The undertaker reported she was trying to sew his hands back together so many wounds on his hands that his fingers were about to come off. She could not get his hands back together in a well enough fashion for the open casket funeral and ended up having to put gloves on his hands. She also reported there were stab wounds to his back, right in the center of his back and underneath his left shoulder blade. The defensive wounds on Jonathan's hands and the stabs to his back are interesting because federally this case was attempted to be ruled as a suicide. The FBI was attempting to get the Supreme Court to rule the case as a suicide. However, the Supreme Court did not rule it that way. The case itself is still left open as a homicide investigation, and because of that, the coroner's report cannot be released to the public. Without the investigation from the private investigator, no one would know about those wounds on Jonathan's body. In looking more into the case, I did find a $100,000 reward still open by the FBI for any information on Jonathan Lewis killer, which would be interesting if they were trying to report him as a suicide. And looking into it, Jonathan Luna, he was working with the FBI earlier on a bank robber case in which the FBI did find all the money from the bank robbery in the bank robber's apartment. And they actually willed the bank robber money into the courtroom during the case as evidence. But $32,000 of that money disappeared, a big stack of it, a stack of cash actually put together in tens and twenties. The FBI reported that Jonathan Luna may have actually stolen that money because of credit card debt. Interestingly on that though, no credit card debt was actually paid with that money. The money wasn't used for that. And if Jonathan Luna did have the money, why did he pull $200 out from an ATM on his midnight drive? It just doesn't add up.
At present time, the case of Jonathan Lumen still remains open and is in an open investigation. Funny enough, in Pennsylvania law, you cannot remove the coroner's report on an open investigation, as I stated previously. That may be why the FBI did not push any further for that case to be ruled as a suicide. So once it was closed, all the case files could be released to the public. There's speculation into mob involvement with the case of Jonathan Luna as well, having to do with the drug dealer. However, it's very little on evidence to prove anything on that. It was filtered down through news media as well that Jonathan Luna was posting profiles on adult websites to meet sex partners, and that maybe he drove the three states to meet a sex partner. Maybe he pulled out the $200 because of that meeting with a sex partner. However, evidence on that is also very limited. The mob, the FBI, there's speculation going around the web that both of those were involved in the death of John Luna. However, there's very little evidence to point toward either. As a matter of fact, that is the strangest part of the whole case. There's no evidence for anything. It seems as if John Luna just drove three states, pulled out $200, kept driving, and decided to take his penknife and start jabbing at himself until he hit his carotid artery. There's no evidence for anything else other than a private investigation in which the private investigator wrote the book on The Midnight Ride of Jonathan Luna. His investigation has more evidence than any other, which is very strange. The private investigator's evidence is not put into any official report, and it's only in his book, The Midnight Ride of Jonathan Luna. If you want to look more into this case, that's probably the best source to look into. You can find evidence on the web, uh, you can find news stories on the web, but as far as YouTube videos and things like that, there's very, very shallow on that, not a lot of those. You can find a couple. There's not a lot of John. Okay, guys, I want to thank you very much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Search. I want you to hit the like button and subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. Our next episode is going to border on conspiracy theory, but we're going to get into that because it's a very good case to look into. So I want to see you guys next time. So hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.